Hello, I am Mac, at least for a day, and everything's going to be okay. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a turn-based battle in Dreams. Um, one of my viewers requested it because he's also trying to make an RPG in Dreams. So I've made a couple, couple RPGs that use turn-based battle system in Dreams. Well, kind of like two and a third of, of a game. Um, I made Quest of Kadath, Starfall, and then I started the Chaos Engine, but I decided I was getting burnt out on making really long games and not really um, getting much out of it. But yeah, anyway, um, I, I still want other people to be able to learn from me and be able to make turn their own turn-based games. So... Um, oh cool, um, and the guy who requested is here, just a man and no more and no less, uh, also known as, um, hope you don't mind me saying, uh, well, I mean, I'll be using some of your things, so they'll see your name anyway, Beezart, um, uh, yeah, I'll be using a couple of your characters to make this battle system, and also Jeff Parker, hi, thanks for watching, all right, 
I need to turn on my move controllers. Hopefully this will work. Uh, uh oh. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I was possessing him. All right. All right, so I am going to show you how to make a turn-based battle system. These are the things we're going to be using to make it, but um, first we're going to start a empty element. Good. They've got a floor here for me. We're going to keep that in. Although I might make it a bit smaller. I'm a little rusty. I haven't made anything in dreams in a while. Let's see, is that... Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. It's been a while since I made anything in dreams. But I think I remember the controller controls well enough. I just noticed that my camera, my uh, picture, I'm just going to turn off my camera since using the move controllers makes my camera not work. One second. Okay, there we go. My camera wasn't going to work anyway since I have to use the move controllers, so I turned my camera off. But at least you got to see me at the beginning, I guess. But anyway, all right. So this is going to be our battlefield. Just on here. And so basically we're making an element. This is going to be the battle system itself. And then we're going at... Oh, how do I undo? Oh, darn. Oh, well. I forgot how to undo. I forgot how to do a lot of things. <laughs> oh well. I'll shake off all the rust and we'll get this get this done. I wanna see that. Okay. Now how do I do things? I need oh yeah, I need to search. Uh, I need my creations. Here we go. So I made a collection with Bees Arts um, stuff. Raze, I guess, is the name of his character. Gonna make him a bit bigger. Let's see, is that big enough? Make him 150% bigger. All right. Ooh. Okay, I remembered how to undo. <laughs> Raze is going to be our hero. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and freeze the floor. Um, where's the freeze tool? Uh, I don't remember. I thought it's in here somewhere. There. Now the floor is frozen, so I can't accidentally move it anymore. Uh, it's a little... Actually, let's unfreeze it real quick and move it. I'm live streaming this because... What? I unfroze it. There, now it's unfrozen. I'm live streaming this because it'll probably take me a while to get this done. If I recorded a video, it would have to be under an hour. And this is probably going to take me more than an hour. I didn't say making a turn-based battle system was easy. It, it takes some time, but anyway. But especially because I... I'm not the most efficient worker, but... <laughs> it takes me time to do stuff, but anyway. 
All right, let's freeze that. I probably won't be paying attention to chat very much. I'll try to glance at it occasionally. Hi, Corpa. Thanks for watching. All right. All right, good. Now the floor is frozen. All right, so we got our hero. Let's place our enemy now. Oh, no. Where is it? I hate it when this happens. Sometimes when you place something, it's like really far away because of however it was created, and I'm not seeing it. Let's try resizing it. Maybe it'll... Uh, dang it, I don't see it anywhere. Dang, we may have to get a different enemy, because this one... This one is... I can't find it anywhere. It's either too... It's got to be too far away. It must have been created inside a larger scene and they deleted everything else or something, or it's just dreams being buggy. So I think we're going to have to find a different enemy. Sorry, Beezart, I can't use that enemy. Um... Actually, I might be able to search. Ah, oh, darn. Ah. Yeah, I wish that would have worked. I want to search. I can't search by dreamers. That's annoying. Okay, I'm going to go out. I'm going to save this real quick. And we're saving it as an element. It is a, uh, is it an effect, sound effect, music, contraption? I'm going to call it a contraption. It's a large piece of logic. It's a turn-based battle system. And we'll call it, uh, just, we'll just call it turn-based battle. All right. Exit it for now. I want to search by... Uh, I know there's a way to search by dreamers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go search dreamers here. <laughs> a lot of... Uh, yeah, search by ones that I'm following. A lot of Dreams' search functions don't work very well. Wait a second. Okay, good. <laughs> Just making sure I had my uh, headphones on. Um, there he is. So Beezart has another character I could use as the enemy. Let's try this. Oh, phooey. I meant to upload it. Alright, let's see if I can place this one. Hopefully... Ah. Okay, good. So I guess he'll be fighting this samurai character instead of the giant tree boss. Hopefully this is a character that can move. Oh, their their weapon isn't drawn. I'm going to have to see. I'm going to have to see if I can draw their weapon. Otherwise, it may not work very well. Uh, 
Uh, oh no. Uh, how do I click into th stuff? Oh no, I don't remember. Oh darn. There we go. Triangle. Um, can I... Take this weapon. Uh, I don't know if this weapon's even functional. I may... I, I think what I'll do is I'll get... Man. Oh, it is. I can't I can pull it out. All right. So pull its weapon out. There. And we're going to put it into its hand. We may have the same problem with this as the with the hero. Okay, now it'll now it's a part of its hand. There. Uh I think I want it flipped over. Yeah. That looks good. Now will this move? Yeah, awesome. We can do that. All right, so we got our samurai enemy. Now he's got a weapon. We've got to get it also into his hand. I'm holding triangle and then clicking X with the other move controller, in case you're wondering how I'm doing this. Of course, if you're somewhat experienced in dreams, then you would know how to do this. Uh-oh. This sword is not going to work. So we're going to... We're going to delete that hilt, and we're going to get another sword... Because this sword, this sword is just a hilt and the scabbard. It's not an actual sword in there. So we're going to get him another sword for his weapon. And make sure I'm all clicked out so I don't stick it somewhere else. Okay. We're going to search for a sword for him. Let's see. Oh, we don't want something with 51%. <laughs> we, we want someone with pretty low. Okay, yeah, this looks good. Let's do this one. Resize it. So it actually looks like it could be his sword. We'll resize it some more in a second. It's a little too big still. There, that's about right. Wait, does that look like it could fit in his scabbard? No, it's too big. Wait, no, yeah, that would fit. That would fit in his scabbard, okay. All right, this is his new sword. Now I got to put it into his hand. A little more. There, now it's inside of his hand. I'm teaching you multiple things, not just how to make a turn-based battle system, but how to put weapons into a character's hands. There we go. 
Looks good enough. Cool. I go out a little bit, check that I can pose the sword. Good. Awesome. All right. All right, now after all that, we finally got our characters, um, you know, figured out. All right. Uh, yeah, this guy's got a... He's got a number on him. I need to be able to view... Hmm, I'm viewing electronics. Let's view... What the? <gasps> he had he had an invisible sword in his hand. Oh no, I didn't know that. I'm gonna get rid of the invisible sword. I like the sword I chose better. This yeah, this is the sword that he had. If I'd have known, I would have just... It looks like he had the same sword that I chose. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, well. Whatever sword this is. This... Actually, I think I just deleted the sword. Dang it. I just... Ah. I just deleted the sword that I put in. Okay, this is the sword I did not put in. We're going to delete this one. That way I don't have to make it visible. Alright, I'm guessing his microchip is what has the number displayer. Is it? He's already got some logic in this. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm trying to remember where is the auto possession thing? So we don't want we don't want any of the characters to be possessed in a turn-based battle. And we we should also turn off respawn. Respawn can cause problems in a turn-based battle. Um, oops, I think I can just turn off the controller sensor. And then he won't be possessed. Okay, here, here's the number displayer that I was looking for. We're going to, we're just going to disconnect all of this. What the heck just happened? Oh no, that's uh let's delete that. Sorry, Bizard, I'm redoing your character's logic, but I need it to work for what I'm doing. Um So basically you gotta make sure that neither of the characters are possessed so that um we'll mess with that some more later. I'm gonna where is this character's microchip? Maybe they don't have one. Is this is I don't know if this thing's even possessable. Oh no, there's the microchip. Okay. Turn off its controller logic too. So it can't be possessed. And we'll make it a health bar in a little bit. Okay. So that's the characters all figured out. We'll, do, we'll deal with health in a little while. Ah, oh, somebody just knocked on my door. One second.
Oh, cool. I'm, I'm in the middle of something. I'm live streaming. Oh, my God. So I can't right now. Sorry. I'll tell you what. I'll come back another time. Okay, sure. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. <sighs> People have been saying stuff. Uh, it's okay. We have three attacks, X and triangle, no problem. Yeah. Well, with a turn-based battle system, you don't possess the character at all, and you don't use certain buttons to attack you. Well, at least in my turn-based battle system. <laughs> If you're making a pseudo turn-based battle system, like in the new Final Fantasy games, which is actually a type of action RPG, you would use certain buttons for certain attacks. But <clears throat> for a turn-based battle system, uh, a traditional old turn-based battle system, you basically use text boxes to control your character and just make dialogue choices in order to order attacks and whatnot. Okay, so anyway... Let's start from the beginning now. So we got our characters and everything. All of that was just the preamble. So, oop, nope. Uh, how do I... Where are gadgets? <laughs> it's been so long. Okay, here we go, gadgets. Okay. So we need some microchips. Oh, kitty, not right now. My kitty's getting on my lap. I'm busy, kitty. Ugh. You're breaking my stuff. Just knocked my controller down. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, so where I don't know why they don't put Marco Chip at this front. It's like the most important thing. But anyway, we're basically going to have a microchip. Well, we're going to have a microchip for each character and then a couple other microchips for other stuff. So all of the heroes. All of the hero's attacks are going to be in one microchip. So this is going to be the control panel. We're going to make our... That is... Let's make these... Bigger. And closer to everything. Alright, let's name this one. How do I... There we go. Okay, this is going to be, I think this character's name is Raze, so we'll call him that. We'll call this Raze's turn. So this microchip is going to contain all of Raze's turn stuff. And then we'll just, no, we'll get a new microchip. Actually, no. Let's clone it. <laughs> How do you clone again? Yeah, triangle plus... Just pick it up. Okay. Whoa, what the... Crazy perspective. Okay. Um, okay, this is going to be... Enemy's turn. And then I like to also have a microchip for cameras. Control cameras from a separate microchip. And lastly, I like to have a separate microchip for Um, victory and defeat conditions. Wait, I just pulled that. I meant to clone one. So they're all the same size. Oh, 
All right. Victory and defeat conditions. All right. Next thing we should do is get the camera set up before we do any logic. So let's get out a camera. And we need to get all the settings right for this camera. So what's this? Focus distance. Where is Oh yeah, here it is. Transition time. I think I think I like to use 0 0.5 just type it in. I'm so glad. It used to be you couldn't type in values like this. Thankfully, they changed that. It was very annoying adjusting values by trying to, you know, just move the move the slider over. So, yeah, 0 0.5 seconds um, transition time. That'll make camera transitions faster. And then you got to make sure you hide imps. And also disable disable controller sensor input. It's okay to do that because all of the decisions that the character make will be done with text boxes, and they'll still be able to use text boxes. But by not displaying imp and disabling controller sensor input prevents characters pre prevents players from doing anything else besides um, controlling the battle through the text like they're supposed to. All right. So, this is going to be enemy camera. Actually, I think I will go ahead and make the enemy's health thing. So, we're going to have, we're also going to have microchips for both characters both characters' health. And I like doing it this way instead of putting it into their microchip. But anyway. So let's have a... I forget where health displayers are. Are they in here? Yeah. Health modifier, health manager. Here we go. This is going to be the enemy's health. And we'll go do a text displayer for that. Where is the current health information? Remaining health. Here we go. Want remaining health plugged into the text displayer. Where is it? It's not. Ah. Um. How do we? Oh, it's been a while since I edited a text displayer. I usually have them set up. Actually, you know what? His is already set the way I want. I'm gonna clone his. Where was his text displayer? Here we go. Oh, number. Ah, I used a text displayer. I meant number displayer. Whatever. I'm going to clone this number displayer. My mistake. All right, number displayer. Ah. All right, remaining health. What? Remaining health should be a hundred, not one. Why is it saying one? Why is the input one? The input should be... A oh, 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 it's percentage. I see. Still, it should say 100%, not one. 
current currently gaining health. What? How do we do? Okay, I guess it's this max health. No, current health. Okay, this is what we want. Current health as a value, not a percent. Oh, there we go. Now I can move it. Put it above the enemy's head. Maybe. It's hard to say where it is exactly. It's nowhere near its head. Or Wait, is this... I can't tell if this is an object or if this is stuck to the screen. This is weird. This is not how I usually had it. Oh yeah, I think I need to turn off... Well, it's it's got always facing the camera, but ah, uh, that's not at all what I want. I want it to be right above the character's head. Uh, makes me want to grab a text display out of one of my other things, so I don't remember what settings I had it set to. Text box properties. Um this yeah we want it to show the text box I can't get it to be over its head Oh yeah, I don't want the text box displayed. I get what that means now. Yeah, it's in scene. Sticker mode? When on, the text will be projected onto the surface of anything in its path. No, that's not what I want. It's facing camera, which is good. Maybe allow rotation is what I want. Uh, I can't... I can't get it to be, like, where I want it to be. I want it to be over the character's head. Well, that's very frustrating. Okay, let's turn off allow rotation. That didn't help. Okay, I think it's more or less above the character's head now. Okay, I want to change it to red. Where's the colors? There we go. I like to make the enemy's health color red. Let's see. Yeah, that's not what I want. Ah. Here we go. Okay. There. Now I can see the enemy's health. Okay. <laughs> All that was just to get it so that I could see the enemy's health. Okay. Rename this to enemy. Be the name of that camera. Go ahead and start wiring them up. So these are cameras. I like to put these. I like to put cameras on a thin one like this for whatever reason. So I'm going to control cameras with uh, timers, counters, 
Counters are a easy way to control things. So if if the counter Oh. Yeah, if counter is full, then it puts out a positive signal. So at the beginning of battle, we want this camera to be on. Yeah. So reset count will turn off the counter. Increase count will turn it on. All right, now we're gonna, let's place some more cameras. Let's go ahead and get his microchip with his, let's disconnect this health thing. None of the rest of his logic matters. Gonna get his own health microchip. This is raises health. Uh, I want to fix his text displayer, number displayer. Make sure it's. Guess that's good. Oop. I can never tell where it is exactly. Okay, good. That's pretty much over his head. Good. It's okay if the numbers are different sizes. Enemy should look bigger. See if, oh, I didn't, I didn't make the other camera yet. Okay, so this will be a view of rays. Actually, this will probably be the victory. No, this will be rays's camera. This will be when he takes his turn. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that in here. This is Raze's turn. Camera. This will turn on the camera when I want it to turn on the camera. All right, what other cameras? We need, we need a camera that's gonna show Raze attacking. I think, we can always move it later, but I think, uh, yeah, I think that's good for when Ray's attacks.
And we'll make a counter for that. So all of these cameras are off. Enemy one will be active at the beginning of the battle. And let's make a camera for the enemy attacking. So when the enemy attacks, that'll work, I think. enemy attacks all right I think uh, I need one more camera for the victory well, we could just use Raze's turn for the victory as well. So when there's a victory, we can turn on Raze's camera, Raze's turn, and yeah, he'll be celebrating because he won the battle. Okay, so I think that's all the cameras we're going to need. This is a pretty simple version of my turn-based system. I've got battles with like three enemies and three party members that get pretty complicated but anyway all right so now to actually start the battle so at the beginning of the battle you need to make sure you have a timer timers are very important that's not a timer that's a counter timer all right so at the beginning of the battle you need to have a timer with just a few seconds on it that will activate all of the logic at the beginning of the battle. So after half a second, yeah, timer finished pulse, we will then use a text displayer, not a number displayer. What is that? Subtitle displayer. No, I want a text displayer. And let's go ahead and set all this up. It needs to be... Um, where do we decide where it is? Here? Yeah, okay. It's going to be on the bottom. Yeah, bot... No, that's not right. Oh yeah, here we go. Bottom centered. There we go. And all right. So this first, at the beginning of the fight is. Wait, uh, what was this? What was this enemy called? It was called Old Yakuza Cyborg. We'll call it that. Oh, let's just call it a Yakuza Cyborg. All right. A Yakuza Cyborg appears. And... Need to make sure that pressing the A button is how you will 
end this. Sorry I'm so rusty. I don't remember everything. Uh, where do we decide what closes the text displayer? Or did I do the... Did I do the wrong thing? Oh, I don't need a text displayer. I need a dialogue displayer, right? Is that a separate thing? I thought there was a text displayer and then like a dialogue displayer. I don't, I don't, oh yeah, dialogue text displayer, my mistake. Sorry, gotta redo that. It's dialogue text displayer. I wish they weren't different things. I wish they could do the same thing. All right, let's redo all this. I can do it faster now that I remember how to do it. All right, centered. A Yakuza cyborg appears. You need dialogue text displayer so that you can set buttons that will close it and whatnot. Prompts to skip. Is that what we want to use? These would display prompts. We don't... Okay, we don't want a prompt to close. We want... Well, we don't really want... a prompt at all. Do we? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't want a prompt. Oh, no, that that will display it. So, I think we can use prompt, prompt to close, but not make it seen. So, most people know to press X in order to continue. So, we'll just make it so that X will make it continue. And then... Yeah, text finished. Yeah, text finished is what do it. So when they when they press X and close a Yakuza, ya, Yakuza cyborg appears, then it will become his turn. So when we press that, we want to turn off. Oh dang, I never named this counter. This counter is supposed to be enemy. What's the enemy being displayed? So we're going to turn off. You need you, Really important thing is you need to always make sure that you turn off a camera and turn on another one in the same action. Otherwise, you'll be left with no cameras on, and that's no good. So turn off that camera and turn on Raze's turn. Now, important thing is, is it's going to take five seconds, five seconds for it to switch to Raze's turn, or to, to switch to Raze's camera, because we, we set the camera transitions to five seconds. So we want a new timer. Actually, ah! Let's clone this timer, because we know it's what we want. It's five seconds long. Or not five seconds long, a quarter, half a second long, 0 0.5 seconds long. All right, so as soon as you press that, this timer is going to start. And as soon as the camera's done repositioning, then we're going to start a new, oops, new dialogue text displayer. And this is going to be, um, Raise's turn. So it's going to ask what should Raise do? Oops. All right, and it's going to have several choices. Oh, I'm going to make sure it turns that on. So we're going to turn off these all these prompts to close and whatnot, and we're going to use these. So, 
X will be attack. We're going to give Ray's a spell too. So we'll have X for attack. Oh no, why can't I reposition this? I think I need to switch to... Yeah, here we go. Vertical alignment being what I want. So that I can... Oops, darn it. I forgot it moved them all together. Make sure there's room to see all of the options. And something I've learned is it's always good to give characters the option to do nothing. So uh, I hate how it repositions everything when you add buttons. But um, so nothing, attack, and square will be. We want square to be spells. That doesn't really matter. What the heck? What? Where's the... There it is. This is why it's good to be able to move it around, because sometimes it gets created off screen. There. There. So there's going to be options, attack, spell, and nothing. Let's go ahead and do nothing. So if he chooses to do nothing, it's going to automatically go to enemy's turn. So we'll just put a timer here and connect to nothing. And we'll, we'll do the enemy's turn later. We're just going to take care of Raze's turn right now. Okay, so if he chooses attack, we're going to transition to his attack camera. So again, another, th another 0 0.5 second timer. You always need that timer um, in order to give the camera's time to uh, transition to the next camera. So attack is going to turn off Raze's turn camera and turn on Raze attacks camera. All right, so after this timer, which is 0 0.5 seconds, we're going to start Raze's attack animation. This is the fun part. Um, we need a timeline, which I forget where timelines are. I thought they were in green. No, I think they're in... Are they in animation? Yeah, timelines are in animation. Here we go. Alright, so this is going to be raise attacks... Attack animation. We're going to do the animation first, of course. And you want to keep your attacks pretty short. I've learned that people don't like when attacks take too long. You want to have a fast-paced battle. So we'll try to keep the attack at four seconds long. Maybe longer if it doesn't look good. Okay, so... I've learned that in when animating, keyframes are your friend. Hey, you know what? One thing I want to add in real quick is a little lighting. Where is lighting? Where is light? Well, I think that's in cameras. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna add a glow lighting. There we go. That way that's like, there's some light on both characters' faces, no matter what the lighting in the scene you're in 
does. These are all things that I've learned over a long period of time making turn-based battles. Like, I didn't know this stuff until I learned it <laughs> over time. I don't want it to be too bright. We'll make it... We'll just make it 100%. And, yeah, that's enough light on his face. I noticed his face was pretty dark. Okay. Um... Lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you're animating, keyframes are your friend. Keyframes are an animation, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> obviously. Okay, keyframe. I used to try to use action recorders or record possession. Those aren't very good, especially if you need to put your battle system into different scenes. It's going to get all messed up keyframes it's always best to um it's always best to control things with keyframes all right so this keyframe is just going to be where he's starting from so raise start I found it's good to separate it's good to separate key from keyframes that control where he is and and separate keyframes for like moving his body like attacking with the sword and such. So we're going to do a cool looking jump attack. So he's going to start standing there and we're just going to clone this keyframe. Uh, how do you edit it? <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then he's going to jump up into the air. Make sure he's nice and centered. This will look cooler later. <laughs> Alright, now we're just controlling his positioning. that He's jumping into the air. Okay. All right. Uh oh. Wait. Oh no. What the? Oh no! I didn't mean to move him for real. Okay, we're gonna have to start over. I don't know why it did that. Okay, we need to reposition him. And we need to make him immovable. He's not movable. Let me turn on time for a second. What the? What? Uh. How did he end up there? Huh, he is movable. I don't know why he ended up way over there. That was weird. We need to make sure... Ah, here we go. We need to make sure he's not movable. Here we go. Yeah, he's currently movable. Turn off movable. All right. Let's see. Okay, good. Now he's not moving. That's what you want. You don't want characters moving on their own in turn-based battles. Let's do that with this character, too. There we go. Not movable. They will be able to move with animation, but not... You know. Okay. All right. He's in that position.
We'll just call this start. Okay, this better not move him for real. Supposed to only move him for the keyframe. Okay, good. Now it worked right. He went back to his original position. So this is up. All right. And then move him down in front of the enemy. He's going to attack the enemy. Good. This is attack. All right, and last we need to move him back to his original position in the animation. So he's going to jump back with this. Yeah, and this will be back. All right, now I got to put all these into the timeline. Let's just bring the timeline over here. Uh, yeah, I think this should work. So he's going to start. Then he's going to jump up. You know what, we need this to be at least five seconds long, I think. So there's going to be a transition. Make it linear transition. We'll change it if it doesn't look good. So he's going to go up. He's going to go down to attack position. And he's going to stay into attack position. Darn, how do I... I don't remember how to resize this. Here we go. He's going to stay into attack, attack position. Now let's make it here for one second. And then he's going to go back. Make a transition there. Then we're going to clone his original start position and he will end there. Let's see how that looks here. It actually seemed a bit too long, but we'll, we'll wait and see how it looks in the actual thing. But okay, so We're going to create keyframes for how he's going to look. Ah. How he's going to look when he's doing these things. So, uh, should I copy the keyframes? No, I'm going to make separate keyframes that will control his body. Uh, yeah, should be good. 
Okay, we're going to go in, and when he's jumping up into the air, he's going to have his sword up. Let's have the sword up above his head. Touch all these parts so that make sure they're all working together. Of course, that <laughs> suddenly makes it harder to position them. I don't know why. Okay. And we want his legs to be in a, a jumping position. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I will need to make a starting keyframe for all this so that we can make sure he goes back to his original position. Oh, that's going to look cool. Actually, I'd like his toes to be more pointed. Yeah, that looks like a cool attack pose. Oh, no. Why? Oh, yeah, we've got the up keyframe on. That's why. Um... Let's just let's just delete it, and then he'll go back to position. But I also want to. Okay, so this is going to be. We'll call this jump. But I also want to make a keyframe that makes sure all of his body parts go back to where they should be. So we're just going to go in here, and we're going to touch. Touch all his body parts that might be involved in... In fact, we'll just touch all of his body parts to make sure that this keyframe will put everything back the way he was in his original attack position. Or original st just standing position. This is why I like keyframes. Keyframes really let you control everything so you can force things to do what you want them to do. <laughs> it's the best way to animate, in my opinion. Okay, so then this keyframe will be called standing. And I'll call this jumping instead. <laughs> um, all right. Now, we want we want to control how he's going to look on this one. So while he's attacking, what's his body going to look like? He's going to be kneeling because earlier, yeah, this he's going to be kneeling on the ground in a cool hero attacking position. Yeah. I guess that'll work. We'll see how this works <laughs> in the battle.
Just go ahead and touch all his body parts, make sure they're all where we, where we want them to be. <laughs> that sounded wrong. Go ahead and touch all his body parts. Uh, never mind. Anyway, um, head and neck too, just in case. I think that's okay. Wait for him to look if he's just attacked. All right. And we'll call this attacking. All right. Delete this. All right. So while he's standing, we want it to be like this. And then he's going to tra tradition to the jumping. Transition to the jumping. So we want him to be fully <laughs> jumping when he's up. And then attacking when he comes down. And again, we'll make this the same length as the positioning. And then we'll just use jumping for when he's going back. Now, now, now you're probably seeing why I like to name these keyframes so that when I clone them, I make sure I'm getting the right thing. There, let's see how that looks. Awesome! Oh, that looks so cool. It might be a little too slow, though. We'll see how it looks. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is too slow. We need to shorten this, because that's like a really slow-mo attacking. We need to shorten this to, like, half-second intervals between parts. And, yeah, make the attack be about half a second as well. <clears throat> you want your attacks to be really quick and snappy. But the animation looks good, I think. Yeah, you want your attacks to be like three to four seconds long, typically. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, that looks like a good length. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, why don't we go ahead and put in sound effects. So, search for... Um... How do I search for just like sound effects and stuff? Ugh, I hate, they mess up their search function so much. Oh, oh yeah, it's tags, here we go. Sound effect, here we go. We need a whoosh sound. Yeah, so when he's jumping, 
do this whoosh sound effect. Let's see. Yeah. We'll use this when he goes back. Yeah. And then we need a sound for when he attacks. So we need a sword sound effect. Uh, I'm just going to use my deadly stab sound effect that I remixed. There it is. It's a pretty popular sound effect. Um, I have to put it down here. Awesome. All right, so there's the sound. Cool. Let's see how that looks from... Well, I want to go ahead and put in the damage modifier. So... When he attacks, it needs to damage the enemy at that very moment. So we're going to use switches. I like to use switches. It needs to be only a... Actually, we're, we're going to use single hit. Let's see if that works. Alright. So damage modifiers that damage the enemy are going to be in here. So... Sorry, they're called health modifiers. And we're going to make this attack do 10 damage. It's going to do minus 10 damage. And it's going to be... It's going to be per hit... Impact? No, it doesn't matter. We're going we're gonna to be using... Currently modifying. Yeah, I think that'll work. It's going to have to go into current health, I think. No, it says you can't do that. Darn, I don't... I don't remember where I would put them in. Affected objects. Is that where I would put it? We definitely don't want to reset health. Dang, I don't remember. Okay, I'm going to go check one of my other battle systems. Make sure I do this right. Um, so we need to save... and exit search for uh, I better better search for elements All right, that's, yeah, this is one of my most recent turn-based battle systems from the Chaos Engine. Um, okay, how did we wire health modifiers in? Oh, okay. I don't... Okay, yeah, you don't even need to connect it to the health modifier. As long as it's inside the same microchip, 
you just need to power it on and it should cause damage to the health modifier. Okay. Don't save. Okay. Now I remember. This is why I started doing all the damage in microchips because it, it was a lot easier then. So, let's see if this works. So it's going to damage it then. It'll activate this switch and it will activate this health modifier and it should do 10 damage to it. If not, we might have to tweak it a bit. Why don't we go ahead and test this in a battle? Because this part is ready to be tested. So uh, this needs to be once and there should be an output for when it completes. Oh yeah, I like to always click ignore frame rate so that if things get laggy, it, it won't affect the attack animation. Which seems like a cheat. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, dang, what? Where is the part that um, sends a signal? Oh, here it is. Yeah, on end trigger. So when the when it ends. It will, well, actually, no, we don't need to do that. We just need to start another timer. So this is a three-second attack. So we need a three-second timer. Nice. So that'll start a three-second timer. Oh, yeah, and this, since it's set to once, we can put this into the power. Okay, let's test this battle. So, I'm gonna save. Then we're gonna view. Ooh, that, that camera's no good. Uh, what? Ah, annoying, why did it exit? We need to center this on the Yakuza better. There we go. Okay, I think there's a better way to... Not nah, just... It's view mode. Yakuza cyborg attacks. We press X. What should raise do? Attack. Uh-oh, our damage modifier did not work. Yeah, I think we need to go back to using, because I, I always used it as a continuous thing instead of... I didn't do it as zone. Oh, I did do it as zone. I remember now. So this is kind of a funny thing, is the zone is just going to encompass this microchip. Yeah, so the zone of attack damage is just going to attack the microchip, which contains the health modifier. Okay, yeah, so... And then we need to make this switch last for about a second because we're making it continuous. Per hit didn't work for whatever reason. All right, now let's see if we can get the enemy to take damage. All right, yeah, I could... Yeah, because a cyborg appears. I don't really like that camera either, but we'll adjust it later. Dang it. Why didn't the health modifier work? Hmm, what am I doing wrong here? 
supposed to do negative 10 damage, continuous, zone. I don't get it. Okay, let me check my other creation again. Okay, good. It's got this up for me. Um, how did we have the health doing damage? So it's got negative number, continuous, zone. Where is the zone? Yeah, the zone is around the microchip, like I thought. Why isn't it affecting the health manager? Current health, that's correct. Hmm, I don't get it. Why isn't it affecting it? The health modifier is inside the microchip. Let me make sure this works. It's working. I built it the same way. I built it the same way I made the one in there. Why isn't it working? Pretty sure we used switches to activate these. <laughs> See how complex these get? Oh my gosh. Crazy complex battle systems. Let's see. Okay, so we've got a switch that's doing the damage. I'm using I'm using a wireless wireless transmitter, but I'm just wiring it on the other one. I don't get why it's not working. I should be able to just wire it without a wireless thing. And it should still work. I put it into the power. The area of damage is surrounding the microchip. Why won't it damage it? Oh, is it cooldown time? Control how soon after receiving damage the effect of it can see any per Maybe that's it. Let's turn cooldown time to zero. Maybe that's it. There we go. Got it. I had to turn the cooldown off. Okay, now we know you have to turn cooldown off on the health modifier. Let's, no, not health modifier, health displayer, or health, whatever this thing's called. The health manager? Yeah, health manager. Okay, let's make sure we do that on his. Uh, oh, it is set to zero. Interesting. So I guess since I pulled out a new one, that's why it didn't have the correct settings on it. Okay, so... We got the attack to work. Let's 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 watch that one more time. All right, so a Yakuza cyborg appears. Attack. Good. Very nice. Okay. And then we also want to give him a spell because spells are cool. <laughs> um, so if they choose spell, we 
Mm, if they choose spell... I'd like to do... I'd like to have him do a spell animation first. Oh, yeah, I know. Um... That might get a bit too complicated. I'm just gonna... I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I think I will make a separate camera for his spell. Okay, so this is going to be Ray's spell cast. I'll show you some different techniques that'll be cool. All right, so... Sometimes we're going to control a camera with a switch in the animation. So, what we need to do is, we'll not, we won't change the camera yet. Let's, let's make sure, okay, so this timer is set to three seconds. So, when, when his attack animation changes, it's going to turn off raise attacks, and it's going to turn on enemy attacks. Okay, so that's all finished um, before we start enemy attacking. All right, so for if we choose, oh, well, if we choose spell, we need to have a separate dialogue box for what spell he's going to choose. Oh, dang, and I forgot. Uh, I should have made a... <clears throat> I should have made a dialogue box for him choosing which enemy to attack. It doesn't matter in this battle, but I'd kind of like to... I'd kind of like to show you that so you learn that part. So... We need to disconnect all this camera stuff here. And we need to make a separate separate dialogue thing. And it's going to say which enemy. And we're going to change the choices to circle is going to do back. And get rid of that. And X will do, we'll just call the spell fire, make it simple. So he's going to have a fire spell. All right. All right, so if he choose, oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting things mixed up. We're not casting the spell yet. We're attacking the yakuza. We're attacking the yakuza. What is it called? Samurai. I think it's samurai. Let me check. What did we call this thing? Cyborg. Yeah, he's a cyborg. There we go. Okay, yeah, he's a cyborg. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's tweak where the text is a bit. So if he if he chooses Yakuza Cyborg, he will attack that. 
So attack, we go to this dialog box. Which enemy? And if he chooses back, it's going to go back to the previous selection box. If he chooses attack, then we deactivate Raise's tur turn and activate Raise attacks and activate this timer that does the attack animation. All right, and then we need a new dialog box if he chooses to cast a spell. So let's use this one. So if he chooses to cast a spell, it's going to say, cast which spell and then there'll be circle for back or fire and then we also have to choose which enemy he's going to cast fire on although we don't have to let's pretend that it's an AoE spell and it will attack all enemies, so we won't we won't make it ask which enemy he's going to attack with. So, if he chooses fire, if there were more than one enemy, it would attack all enemies. Okay. So, if he chooses spell, it'll go to this. If he chooses back, it's going to come back to here. And if he chooses spell, let's go ahead and actually, no, this one is not going to change, um, not going to change cameras yet. Uh, instead we're going to change the cameras in the, in the timeline with a switch. But let's make let's make his magic casting animation. So we're just gonna be controlling one of his arms to cast a spell. Yeah, so we're just going to control his arm. That'll be the start position. So arm start. Then he's going to oh, it's kind of awkward arm. He's gonna he's gonna ah he's just gonna put his arm up like this, kind of like he's saluting or something in some country that has a salute like this. Looks awkward. Put it down like this. Good enough, I guess. Okay, so arm start. Now this will be arm. We'll just say arm up.
and then he's gonna move his arm out like this to cast the spell like he's like he's flinging a spell with his hand basically Hopefully that'll look cool. Okay, and this will be arm out. Okay, so his arm's gonna start. We'll just do this over the course of a second. Actually, we need we need time for the camera to transition. Because we're gonna be controlling the camera with a switch. Uh, camera only needs five seconds to transition. Or, you know what I mean, half a second, 0 0.5 seconds. And then it's going to transition back to where the arm started. It's actually going to take one and a half seconds to do that animation. Maybe. Might have to shorten it even more if it's too slow. But let's go ahead and get a switch out. Turn it. Ah! My having couple okay where's switch here it is okay so while he's doing this his spell casting camera is going to be active and then excuse me but let, let's go ahead and chest out this animation Oh, that was not good. We want it to stay on arm up for a bit. So this is actually going to be a bit longer of an animation. So he's going to put his arm up. Then put his arm out. See how that looks. Didn't look great. It's a little awkward. Let's edit this time. Uh, let's see how that looks. Uh, he, he does that weird up thing. His arm goes up for some reason. Not sure why. Oh well. It it might be fine. We'll see. Oh, actually, this is going to be a bit longer. Oops. Oh, well, it's good enough. Let's go ahead and add a s some sound effects. We want 
just magic sound effect. Uh. No. Okay, let's reset. And can we... Can we search Media Molecule stuff? Here we go. Media Molecule has a good set of sound effects for magic. Maybe it was an action. No, where's all the m magic sound effects? Dramatic effects? Magic, here we go. this. Too late. Okay, that'll work. You get the idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it better yourself but anyway all right so we need a new camera that will focus on the enemy when they're being attacked by a spell Just call this enemy spell. This enemy is not going to cast a spell, but um, it's when they're being when they are being attacked by a spell. All right. So it'll transition to the enemy <clears throat> with that camera, and then we need to make the fire that's attacking the enemy. So we need to search for elements, fire, this should work. So this is always going to be here, but it's only going to appear when we turn it on. Let's see, so it's going to transition to the enemy. And then I'm going to use another switch. <clears throat> Shorten it to a second. And this switch is going to turn on this fire. So this fire won't appear except when it's powered. And then we need a fire sound effect.
That's a little too much. Let's just go with this one. Unfortunately, this is a loop. I'll have to shorten it. Ah! Make it not be a loop. Uh, yeah. Once. Well, not once. We want sustain, and then we're going to shorten it. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> then we also need to make the damage modifier. So... The damage modification is going to happen right after the fire animation happens. Oh, we need to make another health modifier. Uh, we need to name this <coughs> raise attacks. And this is fire spell. Right, and yeah, and we're going to increase this one's damage to twenty, so the spell will be much more effective. So the the way to win this battle is going to be you have to use spells because this enemy is too powerful that if you try to beat it with attacks, you'll lose. So we were able to keep that down to about five seconds. And now we need to actually put it in here. And so... Oh, we need to make sure it's set to once. This will power it. If you choose fire, it activates this. And we need another timer that's going to last five seconds. That's how long this attack is. Then when that attack ends, it will deactivate Raze's turn, which is the camera we left on for this, and activate enemy attacks. All right, let's test this, see if it works. See if the spell I made works. Okay, Yakuza Cyborg appears. I'm going to use a spell. Fire. Eh. Didn't like the timing on that. Let's... Let's have the camera transition a little earlier. Wait. Yeah. Transition the camera earlier. And have the fire animation happen a little later. See if that's good. Yeah. 
and the damage needs to happen a little sooner. I really want to fix that camera. It's bugging me. I don't like the positioning for that camera. I don't really like the key positioning for this camera either, but oh well, whatever. Ah, oh, that's still not soon enough. Just make the damage a little bit sooner. It's got to look natural like the fire is actually hurting it. There we go. That's what I want. All right. Oops. Okay. Actually, let's test. Let's test the attack thing. And let's tick the back button. So which enemy back? Good. Attack Yakuga Cyborg. All right. And let's test everything for the spell. Back. Yeah. Cool. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, so we got... We got all of Raze's turn done. Now we're ready to do the enemy's turn. I'll be right back. I need a quick break. Okay, I'm back. All right, so 
we're done with this timeline. I think it works well. So now we're ready to start the enemy's turn. And I'd like to have the enemy do have a possibility to do two different things so I can use, show you how to do um, how to use randomizers. But anyway, so both of these timers will signal the beginning of the enemy's turn. So we need to have a regular five second timer that will start the enemy's turn. I say five seconds, you know what I mean, 0 0.5 seconds. So both of these timers will start this enemy's start of the enemy's turn timer. And then we're going to use a randomizer, which I think is in the yellow. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning of yellow randomizer. All right. So there's going to be two different things that the enemy can do. And oh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it's input to randomize. And we want to make this true random. It'll be two things that it can do. I'm not sure what those two things are. Maybe I should make it cast a spell. I said earlier I wouldn't have it cast a spell, but maybe I will. So while we have it have the same abilities as our hero. So it's got a chance to cast fire and a chance to um, attack. So, let's do, oh, let's get a timeline. This will be if the enemy attacks. Um, yeah. Let's make the enemy's attack animation. This enemy is just going to walk up to raise when it attacks. So we're going to touch that. So enemy start and there's going to be an enemy attack position which will be it attack standing in front of race Right, so it's going to move right in front of him so it can slash him. Cool. Oi. Move this out of the way. Oh no, we don't want to move the microchip though. Or it moves where the health is displayed. All right. All right, now we're going to make its attack with its body, attack with its weapon animations. All right. We're just going to be attacking with its sword, of course, its sword arm. Okay. 
Okay, so this will be the start. Its arm's going to start here. There we go. So this is arm start. Then this will be the arm swinging up. Just going to swing its arm up to get ready to slash him. I think that needs to be a little... Uh. Uh, this is going to be awkward. A little more forceful, a little more up. There we go. This is arm up. This will be arm slash. Excuse me. Now it's going to come way down and slash him. I need to arm outstretched. So it's a really big swing that looks pretty cool all right let's put that in the timeline No, stop that. Just trying to tweak it. Okay. All right. So, enemy will start. It'll take half a second to move to him. And then it's going to stay there a while. Just make it this long for now. After it moves to him, it's gonna swing his arm up. And slash him. Yeah, we need to make this longer. It will slash him and remain in that pose for a little bit. Like 
and his arm will go back where it was. And then he'll move back to his start position. His attack is going to be about four seconds long. Let's see how that looks. Uh, he, he needs a slash faster than that. So we can tighten this up a bit, make it shorter. Try to keep it at a three second. attack still could be a little faster make it a really fast slash attack yeah all right and then for sound effects we're just going to use the same sound effects as his attacks so Copy the whoosh, which will be used when he moves to and from. Positions. The and the deadly stab to attack. See how that looks. Yeah, I want oop. I want the other whoosh sound for going back. Cool. That should do it. That's about three seconds long. Good enough. All right. So if let's make sure we set this to once. If you don't set it to once, it has to be powered continually to play. But if you set it to once, you can just power it with a single signal and it will happen. We need a three second timer. A three second timer. A three second timer. Okay. And then that timer will deactivate enemy attacks and activate. Raises turn. It'll be Raises turn again. And that also needs to power. Let's close this. Okay, so important thing is don't don't use these timers. This is the start of the battle timer. You're not ever gonna put anything into that again. This is the this is the timer that's the start of Raises attack. Raises turn. So you need to put it into this one. All right, and it'll start his turn over again, but we're not done yet. We're going to make a spell. Oh, you know what? We're not done with this at all. We need to damage raise with it. Um, da, da, da. Gadgets. Switch. Uh, make sure it's one second long and it's right when deadly stab happens that it needs to happen all right so now we need a damage modifier for rays and we can just copy the one because they're gonna do the same amount of damage 
raise attacks. We'll rename it to enemy attacks. But it's going to have all the same settings. Okay. And when the enemy attacks, it's going to do this. I don't think we have this set up right. Oop, no. Damage modifier. Uh-oh. What the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this has a different... So this one's area of attack needs to be around his modifier area. Cool. There we go. All right, let's test if that works. I think... I think that's everything for that attack. Oh, actually, since we're using a randomizer, we need to make sure there's two possibilities set already. So we'll test these together after we make the enemies spell. All right, so let's make another timeline. the enemy casting a spell. These guys are basically going to be exactly the same. But you as the player will be able to win if you realize that the spell does more damage and you only cast spells. The enemy will randomly use attack or spells, so it will lose if you only attack cast spells. Not, not a really complex tactic, but whatever. Um, okay, so now we'll make the animation of the enemy casting a spell. So, arm start. Okay, just like Ray's, it's going to raise its arm <laughs> like it's saluting. To cast a spell. Good enough. Okay, so this is arm up. And then it will be arm out. Ah, uh, awkward. Fling its arm out like it's flinging a spell. Good enough. I'm just showing you how to do that. I'm not making it perfect. <laughs> Okay, and to make this easier on myself, since it's pretty much the same as Raze's spell cast, we're going to look at it 
and get the timing and everything the same. So... I have an enemy... Yeah, I have an enemy spell. We can use that camera for that too, I think. It shouldn't matter if I have more than one thing powering it, hopefully. We'll see. If not, I'll have to make a separate camera. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and copy these switches. This will be the same length of time. Uh, need to grab this, put it on this camera, enemy spell, this one is going to be on Ray's spell camera, yeah, it's the same thing but it's reversed enemies casting the spell and Ray's is getting attacked by it. Okay. So, arm start is right here. Sometimes it helps to copy your own work so you save time. And then arm up is there arm out is here Close enough. <clears throat> hmm. Put in the transitions. Steal the sound effects. Let's see. Yeah, this is the fire. This is the damage. Just do everything the same. Okay, we need the fire animation. It's invisible right now, so we need to turn on... Turn on invisible things. Now I can clone the fire. Oh, why are Raze's eyes closed? That's weird. He must have a blink animation, but... Hopefully I rewound time. Yeah, I did. I don't know why he's blinking. That's weird. Oh, 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 of course, because I turned in invisible objects. He has invisible eyelids to make him blink. That makes sense. All right. And then this fire will be powered by this switch. Cool. And this, we now we need a damage modifier. I think I don't think I need this anymore. Um, damage modifier for the fire spell affecting rays. 
and that is controlled by this switch. That needs to affect his health inside this microchip. Twenty. Yep, twenty damage. Cool. All right. Let's turn off invisible objects and test this animation real quick. All right. Let's put this so that it will play. This ended up being five seconds, right? Yep, same as the other one. Oops. And it needs to be set to once. This is very, very important. you got to remember to set it to once or the animation won't play when you power it this way. And then we need a five second timer. Change it to five seconds. There we go. All right, and then that timer will deactivate enemy attack. Activate raises turn and activate raises turn. So now we essentially have a loop. It will keep going through raises turn and the enemy's turn. Um, only other thing we need to do is create the victory and defeat conditions. But let's test the enemy's stuff. Enemy's animations and whatnot. See if I got it right. All right, we'll just attack. Uh, why are his arms moving? He's got some kind of looping arm animation. I guess that's okay. It's kind of weird. I'll leave it, I guess. All right, let's keep going until we see the Yakuza's attack. Nah, it keeps casting the spell. Hopefully the true random thing worked right keeps casting spell. I wonder if I messed up the randomizer. <clears throat> if it keeps casting spell, I may have to use a different... Yeah, it keeps... keeps doing the exact same thing. And it's really weird because it's the B option. Usually if the randomizer is not working right, it will do the A option over and over. Let me think. I think maybe I need, maybe it actually needs to go in here. Delete, why it, oh, wrong button. Okay, maybe it goes into that one. Maybe that's what I need to do. What the, uh, rewind. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no. Okay. I just remembered. Yep. Randomizers are really annoying. They don't work very well. You need to both power them and put a signal into them. I don't know why. Randomizers mess up if you don't do it that way. Let's see if this works. Yay. Unfortunately, there's some weird animation problems with the cyborg, but 
I'm not going to try to fix that. Oh no. Okay, let's fix some of these looping animation problems. It's got some kind of weird foot looping animation going. We need to get rid of that wherever it is. Let's just let's just power off puppet logic. No, we better not. We want there to be a run cycle. Actually, no, we need puppet logic on. How do we avoid this weird run thing it's been doing? Is there a run cycle I can deactivate? I don't know. Oh well. I'm not going to try to fix all of that. This is all just an example of how to do these things. You'll have to troubleshoot, troubleshoot weird animations yourself. But my animations are working. It's just got they've got some weird like looping arm and leg animations for some reason. I don't like don't like that there is a constant sound effect going right now. Yeah, let's delete this sound effect. And then it won't do that tippity tap sound effect, hopefully. Oops, rewind. Good. We're not hearing weird tippity tap sound effect. It's still doing it, but I don't know how to get rid of that annoying looping animation that it's doing. Is it follow behavior? Let's delete follow. We don't need that. Let's see if that gets rid of it. We haven't added music in yet, so. Still doing it. That's annoying. How do I get rid of that looping animation? I don't think I want to do that. Run pose parameters. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we don't want to delete that, because then it won't move its feet when it attacks, probably. Nothing else is active. I don't know what what is active right now that's making it do that. Oh, well, whatever. We'll just leave it. Okay, so... It, the animations work well enough. Let's go ahead and create the uh, victory and defeat conditions. Ah. Okay, so we have one more microchip I made earlier. Victory and defeat conditions. Oh yeah, let's... Uh... Save the positions of these things. So they don't change when we close them. 
Okay. All right. So basically, when somebody's health reaches zero, oops, something needs to happen to, uh, excuse me, uh, to power power down everything else and activate the stuff happening. So this is going to power, we're just going to call it logic. So normally this will be on. And it's going to be powering, oops, this stuff. We need all of their animations to stop. Uh, there we go. We need all animations to stop when victory or defeat happens. And yeah, don't know if that makes sense, but just do what I'm doing. <laughs> So this timer will turn off stuff if somebody wins or loses. We won't do cameras. You don't want to turn off cameras. Just turn off both of the turns with this. And we need no health. So when one of them reaches no health, it's going to shut off all the logic. So no health there. Or no health here. It's going to shut off the logic. And then there's some other stuff that needs to change when they when somebody wins. So, you know, I should probably go ahead and do death animation. Let's go ahead and make a death animation. So this is pretty simple. Um... Yeah, so both of them need an animation of death. I usually just control this with a single keyframe. So it just needs to be a simple keyframe that makes them fall over dead, basically. Make sure we control everything so nothing weird happens. Okay, so he'll be dead. Instead of making needing to make a timeline to make this happen, we're going to give it a power up. Slow power up. So we'll just give it a one second. We can always tweak it later. So it'll take one second for him to fall down when he dies. And this will be powered by a timer as well. Not timer, counter. So when he dies, it will power up this death thing. And so he'll be dead, animation-wise. And we need to do one for him, too. So he'll fall over dead. 
if his health reaches zero. That should work, hopefully. Oops. What the? Ah. There's another body part right here. I'm trying to select. Never mind. Should be fine. Well, I'm trying to make him not be into the ground so it doesn't cause any collision problems. Okay, cool. That should be good enough. All right. Now, we know this is the death animation. We need to give this a slow power up of one second as well. I'm not going to bother making sound effects for them dying. Like, if you want to make them say something like scream in pain as they die you can but I'm not gonna do that right now this has gotten long enough just trying to get the basic ex essentials done for you so yeah if he has no health that will be activated and he'll be dead okay so back to this um, we we need to have Let's go ahead and put in music. So this will be what will this is what will be powering the battle music normally. Let's just get some simple battle music. Music battle. That sounds pretty cool. Let's do this. I guess it's a Super Mario song. What is this? pretty cool. <laughs> this is like boss metal music, but it's pretty cool. Nice. I guess it's from Mario 64. What does this do? <laughs> now that one's a little too recognizable as being Mario battle music. So I'm just going to take out this part. Delete this. Make sure this is looping. Okay, so normally this will be the powered up music. But then we need to make victory music. Let's see if we can get the Final Fantasy fanfare music. Okay. There we go. That's it. I wanted the Final Fantasy fanfare music.
What is this one? Okay, yeah, we don't want that. We just want this. Should be looping. Wait, no, nope. <laughs> Not looping. We'll set it... Ah! Set it to once. All right. So normally it won't be active, but... Okay, so... Yeah, as soon as one of them... Well... Actually, it's only if the enemy dies. So if... Well... We need to turn off the music if either of them dies. So, if this guy dies, we turn off this music. If this guy dies, we turn off this music. And if the main guy dies, We're going to start a timer. Well, maybe not. Let's just use a dialog box like this one. And this will say The Yakuza Cyborg is defeated. That'll be activated by him dying. Health going to zero. And... I think I will use a timer. A very short timer to control cameras. Let's use a 0.1% timer that will activate when the enemy dies. And that's going to deactivate all cameras except uh, the enemy camera. Because we want to look at the enemy to see that they're dead. So actually, I changed my mind. Instead, we'll use the timer to activate this text box, text displayer. Hey, there we go. Okay. So then when you press X on that, it's going to deactivate. Oh. Darn, I just remembered there's going to be a five second delay as the camera transitions. So we need to... Not five seconds, 0 0.5 seconds before we activate this. 
And then after we press the button on this, it's going to deactivate enemy camera and activate raises turn camera. And last thing it's going to say is, did we activate this? No, we did not. Um, yeah, it's going to be activated oh, uh, by the timer for the camera transition. That will activate the fanfare music. Then we need to make a victory animation for Raze. Delete that. We don't need that anymore. Um, oh yeah, this needs to say you gained experience. All right. And then when you press the button on that, the scene is going to end. So we need gadget known as a door. Yeah, it's an exit. So this will just activate the exit. And this is going to be win. We're going to name this doorway win. Okay. And now we need the loss condition. So if you lose, if he dies, activate this. which will deactivate all at cameras except for Raze's turn. Want Raze's turn to be active. And so if he dies, it will say, oh, we need another camera transition time. Make sure we can see these are connected. We're just going to say raise is defeated. Oops. All is lost. <laughs> Oh yeah, and we want, we need defeat music to play. So let's find some defeat music to activate with this. Here we go. We'll make this a looping. Good. 
Good. All right. And so Razor Tweeted all is lost, and we need another door. The reason you want to name this is when you connect your scenes to together. All right. Do we want a scene transition for this? Dissolve. Let's make it red. What? That didn't work. Oh, there we go. And this, we'll just make it black. Okay. Let's check if all that worked. Probably forgetting something, but we'll fix it. I'm going to lose first and see if the lose condition works. So to lose, I just got to keep attacking and he'll do more damage to me, probably. fix this camera. I do not like that position. Okay. Yeah, let's just rewind. pretty good. transition was a little fast. Can we make it slower? Glow. No, doesn't seem like you can lower the speed that it transitions out. Oh well. All right, so that worked. Now let's win. So to win, we just gotta s always cast a spell. Uh-oh, they're doing the same thing. I'll still win though because I got it to attack first.
Awesome. All right, we did it. We made a turn-based battle. Just a few more things I need to do. I'm going to unfreeze this real quick, and I'm going to tweak it. We're going to make it invisible. Where is that? Here we go. All right, so this is it invisible now. Now we can place it into another scene and it won't be visible, but it will still provide a solid floor that matches with all of our animations so that you have to do less, less animation redo work when you place this battle in another scene. So we're going to save. And we're going to release it as public. And we're going to tag it as... Uh, yeah, it's fine. Those tags are fine. Well, oh, okay, yeah, logic system. Yeah, it's a logic system. Okay. All right. Now, last thing I'm going to show you is how to place this battle system into another scene. Yay, I leveled up. <laughs> I'm sure it's logic. I am definitely a logic expert. Well, it's called design. They call it design, but it's basically logic. Okay, so we're going to change my, ah, oh my goodness, my, oh goodness, my remix of Medieval, medieval Forest and put the battle into this scene. I think this has music in it. Uh, no? Where's the, where's the music? Because there's... Oh, here it is. Okay. We don't want that music. Alright, now we're going to place... Okay, reset everything. Go to... My Creations, and we're going to place this turn-based battle into the scene. It's too big right now. We're going to have to resize them way smaller. Go ahead and place that. And yeah, he's about perfect. He's about the size we want. I need to activate um, invisible objects so we can get the block thing placed correctly. Oh, that's not going to work very well. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. So basically, what is that? This must be part of the samurai or something, but we're not using it, so whatever. That's not quite... Well, yeah, that looks pretty good. Their feet are a little above, whoa, a little above the ground. But we want, we don't really want them colliding with the ground. We want them to just use our block so that it doesn't mess up their animations. Okay, let's go ahead and test this and see if it works okay. See if my logic works. Yakuza Cyborg appears. Oh no! I just noticed that their damage numbers aren't moving with them. Oh well, I think it's fine.
Okay, yeah, I think this is gonna work, but um, edit, rewind. One thing I want to show you though is after you place them in where you want them, you want to ungroup them. Where is ungroup? Yeah. All right, so now we've got the individual stuff. Unfortunately, all of my logic <laughs> that I made is is inside here. So we're going to have to... Oops. We're going to have to move all this out. So if you needed to edit things, um, you would have to edit individual parts of the battle and whatnot. But I think all of this is already ready. And we've got it good. All right, so if you needed to edit this after setting it into the scene, excuse me, you could open everything up and do that. But I think we've already got this ready. All right, and we're going to Can I rename this from here? Nope. I don't want this. Okay. Oh, here we go. No, I can't rename it. Okay, let's save it. See if I can rename it somewhere else. Uh You can yeah, here we go. Here we're going to call this... Uh, what's that? Oh, Yakuza Cyborg Battle. Alright. I think it's ready. Let's, let's give it a final play test. Let's test the loss real quick. So basically, we're defending our house from a <laughs> Yakuza cyborg who came to kill us. Try that again and win this time.
not a very exciting battle, but I'm just giving you the basic idea of how to do this. Oh. One thing I didn't do is I didn't give a uh, victory animation for him. So I might do that. Let's let's give him a victory animation. So we just need a keyframe. I'll answer questions in the chat at the end of this. So I'm almost done and then I'm going to answer any questions people had. All right. <laughs> Our giant keyframe because we had to make everything small. Okay, and we'll just have him raise his sword in victory. That should be good. We'll have that keyframe be powered by um whoops. Same thing that plays the victory music. And we'll give it a short um power up time. Cool. Let's <laughs> let's win one more time and test if that works. Okay, I'm going to look at questions now, answer any questions people had. Let's see. It's okay. We have three attacks. Um, no problem. He has one. Haven't seen you in dreams in forever. Yeah, I'd like to start doing dreams some more. I got burnt out on making really long games, but um, if I do come back, I'll make maybe some kind of medium sized games not like really small mini games and not like really big games like starfall but i might make medium games like my uh escape the killers dungeon or a garden for my wife those games i would call like medium length games um can you even make items not sure what you mean about that. Oh, you mean like using items? Yeah, I mean, you can basically create whatever you want with dialogue boxes. Like you can make him pretend. <laughs> pretend. I mean, all of this is pretend. It's a video game. But you can you can have items in a dialogue box that he can use up and stuff. Um, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, you can figure it out. I've shown you the basics of how to create different commands with with text displayers basically. So you can make commands for whatever you want. Can I make a timer to show how often I can use spells because I don't want it to be infinity, if you understand. Yeah, like like how there's MP systems. I made a system uh, that limits spells. Uh, well, in, in Starfall and Quest of the Kadath, I made it so you can't use spells twice in a row like 
if you use a spell on the next turn, you have to do something else. Um, that's kind of like a forced way of limiting how often they can cast spells. Um, I did in the chaos engine finally make a point system and basically in order to make in order to make a system that like keeps track of how much uh resources you have to cast a spell or um stuff like that you need to use a device called oh where is that device here it is uh, variables. So variables and variable modifiers are how you make MP systems and stuff. So if you want to set this to how much MP he has, um, you can see there's like, it can go like, it can go down to negative. You wouldn't have negative MP. So this would be a zero. So zero would be the minimum. And this would be the maximum. So uh, let's say he had 100 MP, just like he has 100 health right now. He, you could make him have 100 MP, and let's say it's the current value is at 100. So it's currently at the maximum. It's not showing that right now for whatever reason, but let's say he started with 100. So I'm not going to show you all about how to use variables, but let's say if it was 100... He had 100 MP, and then let's say casting the spell cost 10 MP. You would create a variable modifier that would um, decrease it by negative 10. And you would put a signal going from it to the modifier. So every time he cast a spell, he would lose 10 MP. That's just the basic idea. And... By the way, if you want to make variables um, go between, well, actually, no. Yeah, variables are what you need. But if you want them to go between scenes, uh, yeah, you can you can choose the persistent dream option. So if you want, after this battle's over and you switch to a different scene, if you want him to still only have... 50 MP, like say he used half of his MP on this battle, you would na need to make this modifier persist in Dream, and then he would still have 50 MP left for the next battle, and so on. And then, yeah. So, that's the basic idea. But, yeah, variable modifiers are fairly complex, but you can figure them out. It's not too difficult. But anyway, yeah. So, I'm going to save this. I'm going to release it as mixable. Actually, ah, uh, darn. I want to... Well, let's rewind. I'm going to save this. I want I want a nice <laughs> thumbnail for the... for the thing. Alright, that'll save the image of the battle. That looks cool. And then we're going to save it and we're going to release it as public which means it's remixable and we're out of tags um should be a role playing tag just do that one wherever it is man what why is it so hard to move, make this scroll now <coughs> there we go all right it's got RPG tag now. All right, so this is public. And I'd like to also... Um, well, let's exit. All right, so that's public now. I'd like to add a collaborator. And that will be Bizart. I'm going to make Bizart a collaborator on these things so he can edit them if he wants to because I made these for him basically. So I sent you a invite request for that. So you can accept that collaboration and it will appear on your thing and also for this one.
All right. So let me see if there's any more questions, and then we're just about done, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Bizart says, okay, great. Thank you. I learned so much from you. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to I'm gonna play this battle one more time, and then we'll, we'll end this live stream of how to make a turn-based RPG battle. Finish it off with a normal attack. You can see that animation again. Nope. Yay! All right, so that was how to make an RPG battle. I know it's pretty long. Let me see how long I, this I've been uh, live streaming. Oh my, it's, we've been over, we're over three hours now. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm glad I live stream because there's no way I could have fit that into one hour recorded video. But anyway, yep, that does it. That's how to make, or at least my way of making a turn-based RPG battle in Dreams. And uh, thank you to Bizart who gave me the idea to do this. He wanted me to sh to make a how-to on how to do this, so I made it for him. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Bizart creates with it. And yeah, that does it. I have been Mac. Thank you for joining me for a day. And remember, everything's going to be okay.